Singapore's Maritime and Port Authority says that the container ship that collided with a bridge in Baltimore had passed previous inspections. It says that the vessel Dali had valid certification covering its structural integrity as well as the functionality of its equipment. The authority also says that Dali passed two separate foreign port state inspections in June and September last year. In the June inspection, a faulty monitor gauge for fuel pressure was rectified before the vessel departed. Now, the ship's next classification and statutory surveys are due this June. Well, the ship's management company, Synergy Marine, said earlier that the vessel experienced a momentary loss of propulsion. Well, in the U.S., hopes of finding more survivors in the Baltimore Bridge collapse have faded. Authorities there say that with the freezing water temperatures, the six missing people are now presumed dead. Well, a construction crew of eight people were repairing potholes on the Francis Scott Key Bridge when it collapsed. Rescuers pulled two of them to safety. One of them had serious injuries. Well, the Singapore-flagged vessel Dali was leaving port when it lost power. It slammed into one of the pillars, causing the bridge to collapse in sections and crash into the water. Well, investigators have boarded the container ship and recovered its data recorder. Well, Singapore investigators are also due in Baltimore to join the, their U.S. counterparts as part of an international probe into the incident. And uh, for more analysis, I'm joined by Associate Professor Kenneth Lowe, Cluster Director for Engineering at the Singapore Institute of Technology. Well, thanks very much, Dr. Lowe, for uh, joining us. So we do know now that the Dali ship, they have passed you know, two foreign port inspections. And yet, um, just minutes, you know, before it actually hit the bridge, the propulsion engine basically gave way. It died, right? And even with the with the, the backup generator, you know, trying to resuscitate um, the engine, it didn't work. So you've been in this industry for twenty odd years. What are some of the possible causes? Yeah. So thanks, uh, Oteli, for uh, having me here. So first of all, I would like to first express that uh, our thoughts uh, go out to the family and those affected uh, by this uh, incident in Baltimore. Um, we are uh, definitely uh, working towards understanding this matter deeper. Um, on your questions uh, regarding you know, what could be the likely cause, uh, the investigation is currently ongoing, so I will not speculate the, uh, the cause, uh, but I will come from the perspective of uh, the design of the vessels. So for vessels to be certified uh, for ocean going, uh, they have to go through very stringent uh, design requirements. And such design requirements will put in place design redundancy. So in the case of uh, the uh, MV uh, Dali, uh, the vessel is equipped with a main engine and supported by two generator engines, they call it auxiliary en uh, engines, and also uh, emergency genset. So... Uh, when you mention that the loss of propulsion power, it could be due to the fact that there is a loss of power, electrical power from the gensets, leading to the failure of the main engine, and therefore they have lost control of the steering systems altogether. Mm. Well, it, it is it is a, a tragic accident because you know this is something that doesn't seem to happen very often, Not and before. the crew um, they, they did try. Right, uh, just just minutes, in fact, before um, the, they hit the bridge, they dropped the anchor. The the pilot in command, at least, did did that. But I was wondering, what else was there? Anything else that the the crew or the pilot could have done uh, to avert this tragedy? Yeah. So taking a step back, uh, if you look at the um, various um, reports that are available out there, uh, you will notice that uh, the pilots are indeed on board. Um, rendering all the necessary instruction, giving the instructions and advice uh, to the captains of the vessel. And action has been uh, taken. Uh, I think one of the most important uh, action taken is to uh, declare uh, May Day because this will send out signal uh, to the authority to ensure that traffic uh, will be stopped uh, to go on uh, the bridge. I think this is actually a very important uh, if you look at it, you know, is uh, the correct action taken. Um, furthermore, uh, they have decided to uh, drop the anchor. And having said that, they are so close to the bridge. Mm. Um, if you look at the uh, recorded video, they are barely two to three minutes 
uh, away uh, from the bridge at the point of uh, losing power. So if you look at such a big vessel, so just imagine it's a 95,000 dead weight ton container vessel carrying 10,000 container. Uh, the momentum required to come to a stop is tremendous. So um, all actions has been taken correctly, but unfortunately because of the large vessel, mm. the momentum and time required to come to a stop uh, uh, unfortunately could not prevent the collusion. And I mean, this vessel, as you've mentioned, is massive. It's 300 yes. metres, which is the size of three football fields from Absolutely. tip to end. Um, before the failure, I mean, we've talked about how the ship, you know, had gone through all these standard practices, um, you know, for vessels before leaving Baltimore's um, yes. harbour. But do you think that, that, that now, as investigations are ongoing, that some of these measures or standards, SOP, need to be tightened? So um, the uh, maintenance uh, regime will continue to be very stringent because they are actually classed under NK, which is one of the very reputable classification society. And uh, the vessel is also under Singapore flag. And Singapore flag is known as one of the most stringent flag in the world. Uh, so what I uh, believe that uh, if there is any SOP that we can suggest for improvement, it is to really have the tug to um, accompany the vessel. Uh, and you're talking about the tugboat. The tugboats that is initially accompanying uh, this vessel to stay with the vessel until they pass critical infrastructure. I think this is something that but is... How, what uh, kind of a difference would it have made? Oh, the tugboat will be able to, if there's a loss of power, the tugboat will be able to control the vessel. So they will still be able to move the vessel in the correct direction rather than total loss of control. Mm. So now um, they have found like the data recorder and, you know, um, inve investigations can kick off properly. But typically, you know, um, an accident of such magnitude, how long do investigations take? Uh, it can range from months to up to a year. So typically such uh, investigations are very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires the interviews of all parties involved. Mm -hmm. So including the crew, uh, including the pilots, including the master, which is the captain. Right. Uh, so this will actually be a very and, complex... And just before I let you go, uh, uh, Dr. Lowe, just very quickly, right, um, in terms of the shipping route, do you think that is also something that needs to be looked at now? Whether it's being, mm. you know, whether it's going to go too close to a bridge? Yes. So um, I think there are many uh, ports around the world whereby vessels do uh, have to pass through bridges, so underneath the bridges. So I do believe that all safety precaution has been taken. But in this particular case, it's really a, a very unfortunate uh, incident mm -hmm. um, where the loss of power to a vessel is really very unusual. So what I really suggest is that, uh, you know, uh, let's wait for the investigation to pan out and there will be many lesson learned and we should implement the lesson learned as soon as possible. Well, thank you so very much uh, for your time and uh, thoughts. Um, I was just speaking with Associate Professor Kenneth Lowe, Cluster Director for Engineering, Singapore Institute of Technology. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.